A couple of DC power supplies are used with this dynamic braking circuit for squirrel cage AC motors. One of the supplies must be able to apply a 1 second DC current through the AC motor stator winding in order to dynamically stop it. More about this power supply in a moment. The other power supply is a small one and it's only used for driving a DC relay, RY1, which together with a capacitor and a resistor is used as a timer to apply the braking for just one second. The nominal voltage of this power supply must be equal to the coil voltage required by the relay. On the other hand, the figure shows a double pole switch label SW1. When the switch is at position shown in this figure, the motor is off. Suppose we turn the motor on by switching SW1 to its down position. Power line L1 makes contact to the motor's black wire, while the neutral power line is permanently connected to the motor's blue wire. The motor starts spinning. We can also see the power supply labeled A is always connected to the power line and thus 12 volts are always being available at the common contacts of the relay. Since the relay is not energized at this time, its contacts are apart and the 12 volts are going nowhere. Suppose we now switch SW1 to its upper position. With this, power line L1 is removed from the motor's black wire whereby the energy applied to the motor is shut off and it begins to stop. At the same time, L1 power line will now feed the input of power supply labeled B, which delivers 12 volts DC through its output wires, which gets to the relay coil through a series electrolytic capacitor, labeled for now at 1000 microfarads. This discharge capacitor acts as a good conductor of electricity and the relay coil is energized and pulls its contacts together, delivering 12 volts or so from the braking power supply labeled A. If this power supply is strong enough, it will force a braking current through the low resistance motor stator windings. This current pulse lasts for about a second since the relay coil is only energized for the short time it takes a capacitor to reach just enough charge to no longer be a good conductor and is not able to hold the contacts together. When the relay contacts are released, the braking current is removed and the circuit will be ready for the next start-stop cycle. Note, both the values of the capacitor and the resistor in parallel with the capacitor greatly depend on the relay coil current drain. If the resistor is too small, the capacitor will never build up enough charge and the current through the coil will never stop. The only purpose of the resistor is to discharge the capacitor while the motor is running, so the capacitor will be empty for the next braking cycle. If the capacitor is too large, the braking time may be too long. In both cases, power supply labeled A can overheat and become damaged. You must experiment with several values of the resistor and capacitor while the motor is disconnected to make sure the braking time is just right. The relay should only be energized for one second. Another important factor is the voltage and current capacity of the braking power supply labeled A. You want to measure the motor winding resistance by using a nometer while the motor is disconnected from the power line. If the resistance of the winding is, say, 1 ohm, 12 volt A supply will drive 12 amps through the winding, which would require a very strong power supply. In such case, it would be better to use a 3 volt braking power supply using 5 amp rectifier diodes or greater. I hope this video has been useful for you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.